Welcome back to the Nutra Medical Report. And our first uh, guest tonight is Tim Alexander, who's often popping in all hours of the day and night and program Monday to Friday with the emergency breakthrough stories. And of course, he also updates things on our live stream channel. I hope you're back and operational there, Tim. You have a major breakthrough story here on the weather. And people need to understand, we've been talking about this for years. So when you listen to our program compared to any other program, this or any other network, you're going to hear facts on issues you're not going to hear elsewhere. The fact is, according to Dr. Habibuddin Adamazatov of the Russian Space Agency, Dr. Easterbrook, and other scientists who met three years ago, they uh, in Chicago, they actually proved that we are moving into a monitor type minimum ice age, which occurs every 300 and uh, I think it's around 360 years around that time. Uh, and what happens is this cycle we're entering will be last for about 65 years. So between 20. Uh, 70 and 2075 at least plus we're going to have pretty cold weather an average of four to seven degrees cooler a lot more snow a lot different and also with the breakout of the of the pacer of the jet stream which is according to dr um zangari from the frascati institute and also noah which we posted a couple of years ago that uh, the uh, drilling at the macondo drill site has killed the normal pacemaker which is the loop current out of the gulf of mexico for the whole planet that loop current's gone. Uh, people try to say it's back. They're full of it. No, the fact it's not. Is, it's gone. It's, it's gone. And the fact that pacemaker's gone, you also now have disturbances in the upper atmosphere, the plasma physics of the upper atmosphere, which drives weather. According to a phys- a physics, uh, astrophysicists like Dr. Um, uh, like Professor McCanny, that uh, the F- Fukushima Daiichi shoving all these things like xenon, radioiodine, etc., into the upper atmosphere, it's destroying the plasma physics of the upper atmosphere as well because weather is not related to the sun and the amount of sunlight, which was the previous theory, it's related primarily to plasma physics. And what we have right now is the pacemaker of the jet stream and the plasma physics are screwed up. And so we're seeing extremes in weather. And uh, give, give us some of the headlines as to what's happening. Tim, yeah, because- we've got uh, we've got a whole bunch here, and uh, it's about a dozen or so. And these are today's, by the way. Uh, and it's it's just really incredible. But you know what? We told people two and a half years ago this was going to happen. Uh, John Moore, yourself, myself, and Dr. Sakari, uh, when they killed the loop current because of all the oil that they left at the bottom of the uh, Gulf of Mexico. That took the biggest part of the heat uh, transfer system out of the thermal highline circulatory system in the Atlantic Ocean. And uh, that uh, current, which goes up to Cape Hatteras, becomes the Gulf Stream. It's a river of warm water in the cold North Atlantic, and it normally affects the atmospheric jet stream because it acts as a steering uh, mechanism on it because you can if you look at pictures you can actually see how the weather above that jet stream is different than the rest of the Atlantic well it's not there that's why we had uh, you know uh, two summers ago 105 degree weather in Moscow of all places it's why last year uh, Europe froze now the entire northern hemisphere is just here early in December we're breaking record after record. Let me read you. Uh, these 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 are just headlines. Okay, USA. December could be most dangerous winter month in 100 years. Polar Express blast. It's half of the USA as millions are warned to prepare for the worst storm in a decade with temperatures dropping to 40 below. Uh, Swedes warn to expect heavy snow and fierce winds. Germans brace for major winter storm. Enormous, brutal, massive Arctic air threatens most of America. Calgary pulls snow plows off their routes. Too dangerous for emergency operations. Massive winter storm pounds southern Alberta. Not even winter yet. Longest November stretch below 40 de- below 40 degrees Fahrenheit in Dallas since 1976. And this is a little throwback here. Uh, November 22nd, 1963, JFK shot in Dallas on a hot and humid day. America, some of the nation's largest cities hammered by snow. Salt Lake City shatters old snowfall record. America, temperatures 40 to 50 below average. Now, let me find, uh, and I just updated this uh, minutes ago, and I've got, uh, I think, three new, three or four new ones here. Uh, 
Turkey, due to severe cold, lakes, streams, and rivers have turned to ice fountains. Worst cold surge in 60 years in the United Kingdom. 100,000 homes cut off from electricity throughout the United Kingdom. Grand Junction, Colorado, shatters snowfall record. All this is not by accident. It was not by accident that they choose, the uh, British Petroleum chose to drill in a site that was known since the late 50s to be a do not drill here under any circumstances site because right. it was a giant salt dome. It yeah. was not an accident that yeah. the Obama administration allowed British Petroleum to pour many millions of gallons of the deadly core exit banned in most of the world onto the, the oil way, to sink the, it. The, they have an alternative, by the way, that's used by our military, uh, which is a non-toxic alternative that works better. They were even advised in advance when the Europeans were going to come in and clean up the mess not to use Corexit. They would make it harder to clean it up, and they use Corexit anyway. Uh, well, they, they, they were looking. This is, this is the point where a lot of people, you lose a lot of people because... It's so scary, it, it freaks people out, and they don't want to go there. Well, uh, well you know what, I want to actually... This uh, is a, I'm this not is a going population to, uh, reduction uh, program, by the way. Tim, 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 you and I and many other people on this program, we're actually, I believe, and we're not sheep, we're sheep dogs. And uh, when we bark at the sheep, they realize it's, it's a good bark. It's a bark like, we're not going to bite you, we just want you to go over the cliff or be eaten by a wolf. And so we're trying to bark the sheep not only into fear, but we want to bark them back out of fear into action. Uh, they need to realize that you need to start preparing for the fact we're going to have a lot colder uh, winters and a lot more extreme weather, hot and cold. We're going to have a lot more famine and a lot more self-reliance. Americans are going to have to get self-reliant again. They're going to have to realize that prepping is not just going to be a marginal thing for people that are wacky. Like I watched one of the Doomsday Prepper shows and they had one guy that said he's going to be a marauder. Uh, this guy is going to have a. This guy is designing his his whole uh, life on. He only has six months of food, but he's going to come and get our food. I'm sorry, uh, Mr. Marauder, you're going to have a half-life of a candle in a window. You're going to not live very long. And so you'll, you'll, you'll he, give him a, a nice serving of hot lead. I have, I have armor-piercing weapons that will go right through his stuff, including the so-called armor that the Special Forces wear, like they're better. Now, I want them to understand this. Our most important thing is not to shoot our neighbor, it's to prep our neighbor. It's to say, watch me gardening. Watch me putting a water recovery system on my roof. Watch me spend of some of my money to protect myself, and I'll be willing to help you a bit. But at some point, if we get swamped by people or if we have violent people on motorcycles because they'll be using, you know, homemade gas a haul in order to drive their motorcycles around, like the, you know, road warrior, we're not going to be nice to those people. If they come in here with shotguns and other types of weapons to take our stuff, they're going to die really quickly. And, and that includes, by the way, the government. If they think they're going to just seize our stuff, you're nuts if you think you're going to seize our stuff because well, we prepped up. Well, you know, up. I've talked before, and we've talked before, about the perfect carnicopria from hell or the perfect right. storm from hell. Right. And uh, it, it continues to gather, and unfortunately, the more it gathers, the bigger maybe it gets. Yeah, but it, but it uh, could happen spasms. We, we not people only just have get... this. We, uh, yeah. Okay, we know that they created this problem. And right. you, you've got to give these idiots, uh, these monsters, credit. I mean, oh, when yeah. they messed up the Gulf of Mexico, they actually managed to mess up the entire planet and to change the weather patterns well, over the yeah. entire planet. We were already moving but, into a cycle, so they took a bad problem and made it catastrophic. Well, of course. But, you know, that's like you, you don't paddle upstream. If you can, you paddle downstream. So, you know, they, they, they took advantage of, uh, of pre-existing conditions, but they made them dramatically worse. Then there's a little thing about Fukushima. Well, you know, Fukushima actually... Uh, it was so intense; it, it it changed the gravity of of the Earth. The that is the the uh, earthquake that caused the tsunami, but it wasn't a earthquake. Uh, and I think you've covered it on your show uh, probably more yeah, than it, once. It, but the, earth, the so-called earthquake did not have the, all the signatures that earthquakes have. Uh, and right. many believe that it was one to several atomic blasts that deliberately uh, created this earthquake. Earthquake and exactly. tsunami, and now we're yeah, looking at we're on the break. Incredible deaths. We're, we're on the break. So, oh, so yeah, I, I agree. We're, yeah, and I think what's happening is it's a convergence. Now, Obama's latest statement yesterday was that. John, if you can cut the commercial, that'd be great. Has the most powerful pathogen. 
Welcome back, Tim. So, some of the latest things that I mentioned on the, the first hour, a couple of items I want to get your opinion on them, was uh, Bitcoin. China has basically blocked Bitcoin from their banks. Bitcoin also has now new iPhone apps. We have a new version of HIV that can convert to AIDS very quickly, so that's now upgraded. And we talked about the love hormone, oxytocin for autism. Uh, Drudge is talking about global warming, uh, decrease in hurricanes, of course, and we have this incredible weather. Ice storms everywhere. And by the way, one of the things I mentioned years ago is when you see ice storms from uh, places like Oklahoma right through to the East Coast, this is a warning sign of the end. And I believe that in many ways, Obama is our last president. Uh, I, you know, if we do have a 2016 election, he'll be president of, of a decaying economy. And I know that we have, you know, America's not going to disappear. It's a very major player in the New World Order because the only way they're rigged it now for America to come back is if America is a military enforcer and the economic enforcer of a biometric market to be system. And that's what I think will happen next. False peace treaty, enforcement of a biometric currency. Next May, we have to have a biometric ID for all Americans, which means digital fingerprints, iris scans on all Americans. Uh, and of course, they didn't introduce the, uh, the new credit cards in America yet, but in every other country, they have them where you don't need to scan your card anymore, like you have these little scanners. You just walk by the grocery store tab, and they have the, the card is in your wallet. Or your yeah, purse. and a thief walks past you with a, a small device, and he reads your <coughs> credit card number, and then he uh, mimics it, he duplicates it, right, and, yeah. well, um, gee, exactly. you get a bill for $5,000 <laughs> well, here, for, the point. for the, something the, you didn't spend. The big thing right now is authentication, and you get these uh, salesmen, like the sales lady that's on there, and she looks like a witch, actually. Uh, and very sneaky, very prim, very, you know, yappy. Are you talking about Hillary Tell Clinton him. again? No, we're talking about another witch. And <laughs> which witch are we talking I, I about? Could, yeah. You said witch. I couldn't resist. <laughs> she's a head witch, anyway. Oh, Actually, okay. she, okay. she, has, she has such a strong yuck factor. I don't think she's electable, though. She, there's too many people. <laughs> I even, hope even on not. The, I, I, I would rather put my head in a meat grinder or, or a food processor than uh, see her as president. But, you know. Yeah. yeah. If Obama is a minion, she is the... Uh, Daughter Lilith, or the wife of Satan himself. I mean, that's how bad Hillary Clinton is. But uh, we also talked about uh, the uh, judiciary me meetings with uh, Daryl Issa, and apparently Nick Rosencrantz, who's from uh, Georgetown University, is calling for impeachment based on many things the abominator's done. I, I got an email the other day, and I should post it up. It's quite funny. It talks about the uh, impeachable offenses and the things, the other crises that Obama has created. And there's so many, you get dizzy actually looking at them all. It's like, duh, it's, it really is crazy, isn't well, it? Well, we have been pushing uh, the limit, pushing the line for years now as far as the Constitution goes. And the, the, the Bushes really started it, uh, and Clinton continued it. But uh, nobody's gone so far down the road as uh, Mr. Obama. Uh, for one thing, um, well, I don't believe the man is who he says he is. I don't believe he was uh, born in this country, so he's not legally qualified to be president. So he really right. isn't the president. Well, he but actually is a that, sock puppet. He thinks he can rewrite laws. If there's a section that doesn't needs changing, he just says, well, you know, we're rewriting this by executive order. Excuse me, that's you can't not do in that. the Constitution. Well, a good example, besides Libya and all the other things he's done, uh, and Benghazi, just look at this uh, rewriting of the uh, health care law. They don't even want to call it Obamacare, they wanted to call it the Affordable Care Act. How about the Unaffordable Care Act? And really, it's not care at all. Most of it is just getting into your bank account. The IRS agents, by the way, the IRS, which are a union, are lobbying not to be forced onto Obamacare. Did you know that? The IRS union <laughs> But they're going to lobby it on everybody else. Exactly. Isn't that wild? That's yeah, pretty yeah, crazy. Yeah. But here, here's the thing. The IRS, they didn't hire one new residency position to train new doctors. They didn't expand any research facilities for cancer or any other conditions whatsoever. No. What they're going to do is they're going to hire more people to be able to get into your bank accounts and deduct it. And here's how it goes. you got catastrophic insurance. Yeah, you got an insurance card, all right, including if you're illegal. But what will happen is the hospital is going to bill you a large amount because you only have catastrophic insurance. And so nobody gets a free ride here. 
At That's the end exactly of the day, right. It is catastrophic insurance. It is not insurance. There's a right. big difference. You know, I have uh, poor friends and rich friends, and some of my rich friends have, uh, for a long time, have carried what most of people would call catastrophic insurance. There's right. a ten thousand dollar or five thousand or fifteen thousand deductible. Well, that's pocket change to somebody worth several million. And they might not like having to shell it out, but it's still pocket change. Well we have, and this is a figure everybody should mention every day to people they know. We have 102 million Americans of working age that are completely out of work. Now, that's not the 7% unemployment the liars in Washington say. That's hard figures. 102 million Americans of working age out of work, and probably uh, 50 or 75 million severely underemployed. In other words, they're working at Mickey D's or Wally World uh, for eight bucks an hour, uh, 20 hours a week. Yeah, sure. Eat on that. Sure. Feed a family on that. Right. Uh, and then you're going to say to these people, well, uh, you'll get, uh, you know, you'll, we'll get you good, good insurance, good insurance. And uh, uh, you can have gold or you can have silver protection. Uh, yes, uh, $6,200 deductible or $5,200 deductible. And you're making, what, uh, $300 a week before taxes? Uh, and, and by the way, you know, you... <laughs> It costs, uh, but but the average person that needs this insurance does not have the ability to whip in uh, their checking account and write off a check for six thousand uh, dollars, and then the government uh, insurance takes over. If you, for for half the American population having to write a check for six thousand dollars, it might as well be sixty or six hundred thousand. They don't have it. We're in a depression, not a recovery from a recession, not a recession. We're in a desperate economic depression that's apt to get dramatically but, but, worse but, but, in the next few but, months as the American dollar ceases to be the reserve currency as well, everything no, no, collapses. It, 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 but, but here's what's going to happen. It's going to be like uh, uh, the American currency is going to mutate like what I call the uh, Fukushima effect. It'll go from being the American Federal Reserve dollar to the world reserve currency and then they're, they've got a headlock on China already. China, by the way, is creating credit like a, a maniac on lines of cocaine. They have created more debt and more credit in China than the Fed Reserve, the European Central Bank, and Japan put together in every other nation on earth in the last five years together. The Chinese That's are totally crazy. true, but here's one thing China does and, have, though, Bill, is they have gold. And they, they don't, you know, a lot you, of no, gold. No, no, but you know that, how much gold? No, no, is that's the amount of gold. Dollars. That's the gold that they put there. Listen, the largest gold mine on Earth is in Alaska. The second largest one is in is in is in British Columbia, and I've actually knew it was north of Williams Lake. We have so much gold in America; it's nuts. And we also have we are the number one oil and gas producer on planet Earth today, that's true. even with all the obstruction from the idiot in chief in the White House. So but why America are we is like better life? <coughs> they're stealing it from us. They're stealing it from us for underground cities, for off-world space platforms, giving it to their banker buddies. They're creating a crisis of credit on purpose. There's no need for it whatsoever. We get a robotic factories making everything we need here. We don't need to buy from anybody. Yep. I remember when I remember they're not going home to mama. Not gonna be funny. Welcome back, and uh, we have Chris Harris. Lots of topics to talk about. The low hanging fruit you mentioned that they're pulling from the Fukushima Daiichi. Uh, some of the reports they have are kind of foolish. They say that the amount of radioactive water indicates that they've somehow been able to block off the water coming through the aquifer underneath Fukushima Daiichi. Uh, my radiation detector, strangely, is lower than it has been for a while. But they've been pulling out the easy to pull out radioactive fuel rod assembly bundles from cooling pool four. Uh, the fact is, when they get to the, the uh, 90 degree angular stuff, the stuff that's jammed in or melted down, it's not going to go anywhere. In fact, as they pull on it, they're likely to start a pyrophoric fire. The chances that the corium will cause a hypercritical reaction, a nuclear explosion, which will be not a big bomb like, uh, let's say, Nagasaki or Hiroshima, but big enough to disperse the nuclear material in the pyrophoric fire 
literally far and wide around the whole planet. <clears throat> the amount of dead ocean out there, 3,000 nautical miles, which is 4,000 miles, that are directly uh, east of Japan, of the northern island of Honshu, is just devastating. And a number of people that literally uh, sail around that area of the Western Pacific have seen this. And we now have, of course, on top of that, the silence that's imposed by the Abe Nazi government of Japan. And this goes back to the World War II times, where, in fact, it was required that you do not even question authorities, that you give your daughter over to be a prostitute for the army, that you supply and give over all your gold or anything else you have, that you disobey. In fact, just talking against the government or thinking against the government considered a crime. And now they've returned to this kind of crazy... Japanese uh, shogun kind of mentality, which I think is completely disgusting to treat human beings this way. And uh, I personally am calling for the Japanese and the journalists to revolt against it. I'm calling for revolution. I really think it's time is enough that we have to stop this because this kind of foolishness will come here. If they think the globalists think they can do it in the laboratory of Japan, they'll do it in the laboratory of California or anywhere else. They're going to do it wherever they can get away with it They'll say, hey, it worked on these group of human beings. Let's try it on the next group. We must not let this happen. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's, Chris, tell, tell us what you found in your research, because you have, we have these articles posted up, and I find it yeah. mind-boggling they have the nerve to pull this kind of crap off. It really is amazing. Some whistleblower. I mean, that really caught my attention. I guess it was last week, some whistleblower yeah. journalist and it ended up in prison with, they said cloth jammed down his throat or stuffed in his throat because he was trying to get the word out and it wasn't exactly what the corporate line was. So that's, that's pretty heavy-handed in itself. But now to come out with a terrorist bill, if you, that, that, that says anybody who would reveal such information that's contrary to the, uh, you know, the powers thinking would be declared such a, such a terrorist or, or something, or could be, you know, they, say they, they put it in the terms of it could be, you could be declared a terrorist. It's like, no, no, what they do is know, they leave it airy fairy. It's like the uh, old statements of Vladimir Ilyich Lenin and his, his functionaries to pur do uh, pogroms or purges where they killed 55 plus million Russian citizens and Soviets uh, through Ukraine and elsewhere, and the three purges they had through the Soviet Union. What it is is let, show me the man and I'll show you the crime is a statement from Le Vladimir Lenin. And so now we have the Abe government doing the same darn thing. It's not acceptable. This is not, not acceptable. And you need to vote Abe out. You need to neutralize him. You need to act like we're going to ignore you, Abe. We're going to continue to publish reports. And here in America, we're publishing reports about how dangerous this is because here's the events I expect to happen in the next number of months, probably in 2014. But it could be this month. I don't know. When they start to pull the bad fuel rods, they're going to have a pyrophoric fire. We're going to have continued death in the oceans, and that death march of the high concentration uh, strontium-90 plume, plus other radioisotopes, is marching across the ocean. It's going to strike the area between British Columbia and Washington State sometime in the next two to five months, and then that wall of death will move along the coast because it tastes different than sea animals. And they can taste it thousands of miles away, so they're fleeing. So we now see all kinds of animals fleeing to strange areas where they're dying, even the seabirds in Australia, 25 million died. I think it was 25, 25 million, 25,000 25, birds died off of the coast of Australia because they were turning from the uh, Azores and from the northern hemisphere, northern Pacific Ocean, where they, they cycle in their, their migration routes before they come back to Australia in the southern hemisphere. And they're probably exposed to radioisotopes. Uh, what we're going to start seeing is we're going to start seeing death in the oceans. We're going to see a massive radiation release where it will become evident to people that they have acute radiation sickness in Tokyo and upwards of 50 million people are going to be ham jumping like lemmings off of a cliff trying to get out of northern Japan with not fast enough routes to get away from the wall of radiation expanding as the place goes really bad. And right now radioactivity in J Tokyo is high enough that people should already have been planning and getting out of there. Uh, what I suspect is going to happen is we're going to have that crisis then the next crisis will be a bond market run, which we already see here in America with the judgments by the, the against debt right, uh, that the uh, municipal bonds are under uh, uh, a crunch as well as people's pensions, that they can seize them even though it's illegal. What will happen is there's going to be an economic attack by the stock market and the bond markets against Japan, which is the third largest world economy. 
and the most advanced area in terms of industrialization in the Asian area, that's going to happen. And so these, the reason why Abe is in this chokehold on journalists is because they know the next thing is a bond run and the collapse of the Japanese economy. They've been injecting money like crazy to see if they can prop it up. Well, the propping is going to come to a quick end here, and people don't understand how integrated Japanese manufacturing is to, inter to manufacturing in Europe and to America and other countries, including China. Uh, components, paints, all kinds of materials are made in northern Japan that are not available anywhere else, like black paint for making cars black. And uh, if you lose that technology, if you lose those components, you're going to have some big problems with the chain of production for all kinds of companies all over the planet. This is going to have a major, major effect. Uh, but I expect <clears throat> Abe's response is they're in super panic state, state right now. Uh, already they should be planning a massive uh, evacuation of Tokyo because when they get past the low-hanging fruit, it's going to get ugly. And when you get a pyrophoric fire, trying to get 50 million people off the northern islands of Japan is not going to be any easy job, even for our amazing American logistics. It ain't going to happen. Well, it is kind of obvious that they're trying to paint the rosier picture, even though it's hard to go ahead and uh, <clears throat> to look at the disaster that, that's there and to do anything and spin it in any other way than what it really is. But because, as you said, they <clears throat> have done it; they have a test well, and they found that um, within the last week or so, it's gone from forty thousand becquerels per liter of uh, of a beta emitter to eighty thousand, and obviously that well. They're saying that's because we're successfully slowing down the rate of leakage into the ocean. So obviously it's going to go up here. Well, you know, I would look at that and say, well, congratulations. Yeah, that, you spent a lot yeah, of money. Yeah, but you can't say that, though. You can, you, can, you, can, well, you can look at a rain barrel. How fast is rain going into the barrel? How fast is it going out? If there's right, a direct well, leakage from reactor number one, for example, which we know is a clear reaction, there's a clear link directly from the reactor containment core, then, they're, then what they're saying is fallacious. In fact, what we have is a massive increase in release of radiation. And it doesn't mean that there's less getting in the ocean. What they need to do is sampling of the ocean water directly off the shore and see what the, not only the isotope profile is, but also the rate of becquerels per cubic meter of water. We don't hear that. We don't see sampling of fish here or off the coast of America or Alaska or British Columbia. We see nothing. In fact, the governments are purposely stonewalling us, and then now they're going to try to call us terrorists if you raise these issues and I tried to talk to our politicians they just basically you know shut the door in our face and say we don't want to talk to you and they don't even want, they don't even want to get insulting they, in fact it's so bad they won't even get insulting over the fact they don't want to talk to us they just don't want to talk I offer my congratulations to Tepco for constructing a speed bump <laughs> instead of a, instead of a shut off valve. No, there's no containment containment means that there's, it's completely right. bottled up from so, all different directions uh, and monitored. Well, there's no right, monitoring and there's no bottling. Right. So, so exactly. Now, there, there's even people trying to move the children away from these areas to non-radioactive areas in other parts of Japan. But stop burning debris from the site all over the, the whole island of Japan, making the area somewhat radioactive everywhere. So they want to blur the effects on long-standing illnesses like stroke and cancer and other illnesses. So they won't see how catastrophic it is to northern Japan. And here in California, they've proven it causes childhood hypothyroidism, thyroid nodules, and failure. That's the fact. If you're going to take yeah, they're going to the dilution problem, the dilution solution. A, yeah, exactly. So the, 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 that, that scenario makes sense, right? They're they're worried about an ultimately a bond market run and the collapse of the Japanese economy. So they're going to they're going to take the when they, when they know they're that desperate, they're going to make it a terrorism. <laughs> Now that I've done my little rant on this, um, one of the things that I know is on the Rents program, because I'm a guest on Rents every Thursday, usually the second hour, but the first uh, Wednesday of the month, it's the third hour. And we cover multiple topics. We'll touch on this. We'll talk on uh, the issues of the emerging super plagues, H1N1 returning, H3N2V with some of the H1N1 genes, H7N9, etc. in Fukushima. But uh, take out your crystal ball. What do you think is going to happen in 2014, what uh, what do you think happens on not just this front, but just hit the bullet points? One, two, three, four. What do you think is going to happen? One, this uh, the schedule for for removal of fuel is still all of almost all of 2014, so there's still plenty of time 
for for success or failure. Let's go. I'm just going to be you know, just in that kind of general uh, way about it. Yeah, um, I would say uh, once they get the rid of the easy stuff, the hard stuff, they're going to fail. In other words. They're going to go, it's almost like throwing horseshoes. You're really good at throwing horseshoes 20 feet, but when someone places the horseshoe peg 100 feet away, your chances of getting one around the peg are pretty damn near zero. So what I think is going to happen is they're going to fail, uh, and the failure is going to cause a pyrophoric fire and evacuation of the Fukushima site, number one, and Tokyo. That's what I predict for 2014. Number two, the Fukushima disaster is pumping in radioisotopes that are destroying the ozone layer, and it's one of the things like Dean Wigington's talked about on rents, that I agree with, that these radioisotopes are a major factor in destroying the ozone layer, which means the benthic layer of the oceans is dying, not just from radioactive or isotopes and heavy metals in the water, but because they're being burned by a high-energy ultraviolet B, C, and D light. Uh, the, the second thing I see is a teetering economy where they're purposely choking off the real economy credit, and uh, things like the collapse of the Japanese economy, the third largest economy, just marginally behind the Chinese, is going to cause a bond market run on municipal bonds, is going to cause a currency crisis, and is going to increase the militarism of the Japanese, not decrease it. That's why Abe is rebuilding their military like crazy, because he sees a future conflict with China. China and, and, and Japan are getting ready for a future thermonuclear war. And I think that that might be years off, but I see the rumblings of that already starting. Uh, by the way, the Chinese are really stupid. And you need to take this and, and uh, translate this into Chinese because you've got Taiwan, South Korea, and Japan armed to the teeth with short range nuclear missiles with the most advanced technology from America, US space based weapon platforms that can take you out in a matter of seconds without firing a missile. So if you think, China, that you're going to get away from America, it's got you pinned down economically and otherwise, and is basically saying you're going to do this or else. You're crazy, and printing tons of money and buying up everything on the planet isn't going to get you saved. And you're also, by the way, in the swirling radioactive cesspool called Japan, because if this really blows, then within one week, 22 provinces in China reported radioisotopes in their literally crop-growing, food-growing areas of China. So the Chinese are literally uh, in the backwash of this. At the same time, they're building nuclear reactors at a ridiculous pace still, uh, on-site in China, because they have serious power problems, and the only the reason why they want to have the access to the South China Sea is they don't really have any oil. The only oil that they get is from buying at two dollars a barrel from the Rothschilds from Iraq, and buying it from the the Iranians. But beyond that, they do not have any oil on their on the land or in their waters. So your comments uh, on all these topics? You know, the Chinese are definitely snapping up uh, nuclear technology as fast as they could assimilate uh, Yeah, but it, right. old, old dirty that. nuclear technology that's going to get them. Yes. Yeah, and they're also, by the way, people don't realize there's, I think, between fourteen and 22,000 miles of rivers across China. It's riddled with nuclear fault lines, with radioactive with fault lines that can be triggered off by space-based geotectonic weapons that we have. Okay? The fact is that China is a sitting tick-tock, tick-tock uh, bomb. And, uh, you know, it, they had a giant underground facility a few years ago that we, in the West, blew up because we can see it through our space-based torsion field imaging that they were getting ready for forward placement of all kinds of, you know, of their million, many million man army. And it, we just blew it up. And unfortunately, it killed a lot of other people too, including, I think, over 80,000 children. People don't understand that we're seeing the parties getting ready for World War Three. The parties are getting ready for World War Three, and uh, you know it's not going to last as long as people think. I mean, World War Three is going to be about two hours. Now, the full extent might last a day, but it's only going to be a couple of hours long. It's not going to be a, a you know it's not going to be a movie that's going to take three or four hours. Within two hours, any major city in any major area of Russia, China, and America will be a vapor cloud and glass. Two hours. The aftermath will take a lot longer than that, though. Exactly. And the radiation, you won't be able to come out outside for two weeks, but unless you're taking a lot of radiation protection, you have a rad suit on. But, uh, and of course, I was involved in a project over 40 years ago that the military was doing to use drugs to protect against radiation. So, wearing a very light rad suit, they could operate in military procedures and activity within two days of a nuclear war. People don't understand that the the globalists are fully prepared to survive a nuclear war. They want to call the population of the planet using this. They're calling it using Fukushima right now, which is why they're not fixing it. 
how many women do you think in America have probably already miscarried many hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of babies because they've got trisomy caused by Fukushima radiation? How many people have died prematurely or are going to have weakened immune systems when the flu comes through? They're going to die, and they won't directly connect it to Fukushima, but their immune system's been shot. Their mitochondria failure. That's why we're seeing babies and little babies in California. It's not just California because the radiation levels may be much higher in Vermont or in France than they are here, depending on the air currents. So what do you think is going to happen? Well, basically, well, the globalists want to reduce the world population. Well, I think they might get their way if, uh, if, if it continues this way. Well, it's because um, they're getting their way because of one thing. The public are viciously ignorant. They'll attack people like me or other people that raise questions, and we don't have all the answers, but we ask really damn good questions. And if we have partial answers and they're developing, and we ask even better questions about how to gain more data. For example, when I recommend they put data logging radiation detectors like my Inspector Plus in every commercial airliner and build uh, plume maps based on the, the flight path of the commercial airliners across America and international waters, say, over the Pacific, we could build a plume map that would tell us when and how high radiation level plume is coming and at what altitudes so we'd have flights of flights fly around those plumes so don't suck in air and concentrate it inside the cabin. We'd also know what cities need to go and do hazmat procedures because they're going to get super high radiation levels if there's a big burp of radiation. We need to start doing this now. But when I talk to politicians like Dr. Wyden, like Wyden the senator from Oregon, or Senator Feinstein's knucklehead uh, so-called nuclear experts, which is you know a, a fresh grad who knew squat about radiotoxicology. And by the way, when I'm swiping him, I'm going to also swipe uh, these uh, other experts, including uh, Helen Caldicott and our other experts in Britain that have talked about this and tried to pretend it. It's not going to hit the southern hemisphere, number one, or it's only going to increase the radioisotopes by 60% since the nuclear testing age over the last 30 some years. You're talking about concentrated plumes at low altitude, not high altitude dispersion over 30 some years. It's a completely different ball game. This is not the same. And, you know, when I hear people who think they're experts in areas in which they're not, and they speak out of turn, they don't understand oceanography, they don't understand astrophysics, they don't understand these other issues, they need to be quiet. They need to be quiet. And if, if they even raise a good question, it can be knocked down if it shows that they're incompetent in asking that question. And when they get out of their area of expertise, they need to realize, I'm not in my area of expertise, and they need to shut up. It really makes me sick when I hear people who say these things and say that, that they're all going to be fine. Yeah, the radiation will be delayed in the southern hemisphere, but if Fukushima completely blows, it will take two to five years to peak in the southern hemisphere, and it'll be lower, but it's going to hit there too. Just like, you know, we've already proven that there's ocean currents that carry it out to the, to the, to the western coast of, Australia, of New Zealand and the eastern coast of Australia. That's already proven. And to the west coast of South America, and jet streams that carry at high altitude across the 300 times of water flow that the Amazon does from the northern to the southern hemisphere every day. So, you know, these so-called experts that don't speak out of turn need to be quiet. When you stop making pronouncements, it's going to make people make judgments. Don't worry, be happy, you'll be fine. It's not going to kill you. You can survive it. Yes, if you take nutraceuticals, if you have hazmat procedures, if you eat clean filtered water, if you protect your mitochondria, you're probably going to be okay. But if you're Wife is eating radioactive food. Don't be surprised if you have a child with a birth defect or trisomy. Don't be surprised if she can't have a child because they continue to miscarry them because they have trisomy. Your comments, Chris. Yeah, that's, uh, that's right. we got to keep on, uh, we have to put out good information, the right information, so that people are informed and, and better, and other people can ask questions based right. on that good information instead of the chaff that we're being subjected to. Right. Continue. Those, those poor, poor Japanese women and men that are having babies with birth defects, that are having children with cancers, that are having people with heart attacks and strokes. You know the rate of stroke? in the areas and the problems of the directory by Fukushima went up 3,500% since this happened in March, two and a half years ago. 3,500% increase of vascular attacks and illness caused by the radioisotopes like cesium and strontium, etc. It's coming to our home too. And believe me, the Grinch is not just going to steal this Christmas. Protect yourself, you can survive it, but you got to do the right thing. Back tonight, hour two, rents. Oh,